How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be covering a cost estimate for an aircraft design project. Uh, keep in mind that this method could be used on any engineering project, be it a car or computers or aircraft or whatever it is. The only thing that is going to change is uh, the non recurring cost, the recurring cost, possibly the learning curve, and the production number. But the rest of it just uh, is quite trivial. Um, so what we're going to start off with is uh, our production number. For this aircraft, I'm going to assume that we're going to need 150. Uh, keep in mind that at the end I'll show you how changing this number is going to change uh, our final uh, unit cost as well as our profit. For our non-recurring costs, I uh, took some categories that uh, will be needed. The non-recurring cost is something that uh, you only are going to spend the money on once, uh, be it in the beginning, like research and development, or uh, machinery, or quality control and testing, which is going to be needed usually at the end. And you also have recurring costs, which is the engine production. You need uh, a couple for every aircraft. The assembly is going to be needed for every aircraft, and uh, as such. So starting off with the non-recurring cost, uh, we have research and development, machinery, training, testing, quality control, and tooling. Um, for these numbers, uh, the actual calculation of these can be, uh, can be found using uh, textbooks or methods prior uh, used in the industry. Uh, for the sake of simplification, I'm going to use uh, numbers made up by myself. So I'm going to assume that R&D is going to need $100 million, machinery 35, training 20, testing 13, uh, quality control 6.5, and, and tooling $1 million. As you can see, the costs are in $1 million. Um, for recurring costs, as I said, engine production, I'm going to say $4 million total. We're going to assume that the aircraft needs two engines of $2 million each. Uh, the assembly, as you can see, the number is not quite... Uh, an integer or uh, quite a clear number and the reason for this is I'm going to teach you uh, something called the learning curve this can be used for every single category but uh, for the sake of simplicity I'm just going to use it on assembly uh, so I'm going to assume that uh, a learning curve of 90% is natural in the process of assembly a learning curve basically says that as you go into the process of production, the first unit is going to take a longer time than it does take you to do unit two or unit three and so on. So as you can see, I'm going to assume that the first unit takes me 400 hours of assembly. Based on this learning curve, if the second unit takes 90% uh, of the time that it took uh, my first unit, it's going to take me 360 hours. And so for the calculation of the actual uh, time required for, for assembly, I'm going to multiply my initial time by my uh, assembly unit to the power of log of my learning curve divided by log of 2. So uh, the exponent that you can see here is uh, log of... Uh, this number 90% or 0.9 divided by log of 2 to the base of 10. The base can vary as you know. And so I'm going to see that for my 150th unit it's going to take 186 hours 0.76 compared to 400. Now usually in production uh, procedures there is a minimum time that it takes you and it doesn't matter how how many units you produce this is the actual time that is needed if you're working the most efficiently. And so to find the total time for my assembly, I'm going to sum all these numbers up. Uh, for the method of summation, I'm going to use uh, an integral and integrate uh, the, my formula from uh, 1 to 150. Uh, you should keep in mind that the smaller this uh, last number becomes, um, the more inaccurate your summation is going to become using an integral and vice versa. So for 150 units my uh, degree of error is roughly 0.3% so I'm happy with that. 
So roughly it's going to take me 33,000 hours. So assuming that the hourly wage for this is $90 an hour multiplied by 33,000 hours divided by a million, I'm going to get $2.97 million. My avionics is going to cost $1 million for each aircraft and materials I'm going to assume is $700,000. So a total of $175.5 million for non-recurring costs and $8.67 million for recurring costs. Now, to find the actual cost of the aircraft uh, or the production cost, this is the expense, this is the money that the company needs to, to spend for each unit of the aircraft, I'm going to take this number, 175, for my non-recurring cost and divide it by the production number and then I'm going to add that to the total for the recurring cost. The reason for this is since this uh, non-recurring cost is going to be spent once, then I'm going to need to divide it by each every number of aircraft. And then, since this recurring cost is going to be used every time I need to produce an aircraft, then uh, this is just divided by one. So, to find the production cost, I'm going to take my non-recurring cost, divide it by my production number, and then add it to my recurring cost. And so now I find what my expense or production cost is in million dollars. Now in every business you need profit. So I'm going to assume that my profit margin is 10%. So to find my unit cost or the revenue from the sale of each aircraft, I'm going to multiply uh, my production cost by 10% plus 1. So multiply by 1.1, my unit cost is going to be 10.8275 million dollars. Now, there is another concept called break-even point. Break-even point means how many aircraft in this case do I need to sell so that my profit and my expense are going to be equal to each other. And once you achieve the break-even point, the more, uh, sorry, once you achieve the break-even point, then from then on, you're going to only make profit. So to find my break-even point, what I need to find is I'm going to say my production number multiplied by the production cost divided by my unit cost is going to give me the break-even point. My break-even point is 136.36 .36 aircraft. So that means from then on, whatever aircraft uh, I make, is going to give me profit. So to find my total profit, I'm going to take my total production number minus the break-even point and then multiply it by the unit cost of each aircraft, where I'm going to obtain 147.65 roughly million dollars of total profit. Now to see how these numbers change if I change my production number. Let's go ahead and uh, assume 250 production number. So as you can see I've uh, linked this number and these numbers to this. So by changing my production number to 250 my total time is going to become roughly 51,000 hours and as I said by increasing this number this becomes more like a sum, uh, more like an integral rather than a sum. So this becomes more and more precise. So for 250, mil, uh, 250 units of aircraft made, my production cost is going to be increasing by one point uh, something million dollars. And my unit cost is also going to go up. But as you can see, my total profit also goes up. This is it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe.